Welcome to the Root Bible Podcast. This is no green screen. We're playing with a new green screen that we're super excited about. And um, yeah, we haven't figured it out yet. So it's a little rough. It's a little raw. But um, yeah, this is a welcome to the Root Bible Podcast. Hang on one second because I need to join and um, thank everyone for joining us on rootbible.com. If you have not joined on rootbible.com yet, you got to go check it out. You can enroll for free in the Holy Spirit course, and then there's access for every age group, junior high, uh, senior high, elementary, preschool, and the adult classes on there. There's a class for just moms. There's a class in Spanish. Whoa, my wife is helping me out. That looks so much better. And so, you got to check it out, rootbible.com. And the, you can, we have live interaction there where you can chat with the others. You can ask questions. You can participate. And that's what gets to be really fun. So check it out, rootbible.com. And then join the elementary class. And then click here to join uh, on the adult class. All right. I've stuttered long enough. I am so glad you're here. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, and we're talking about um, a way that He works that we often don't really get into. We, we know that the Holy Spirit's there. We know that He works, and that's as far as it goes for a whole lot of us. And that's really not God's best plan. It's not for us to be unaware of how the Holy Spirit is working or wants to work through us, but instead to be uh, sensitive and aware of how he works so that when he decides he wants to move, we are ready. We can hear him, we know his voice, and we know what he's trying to do we, so we can partner with him. So we're going to dive into that. Before I do, uh, I want to tell you a couple things. Pastor Kate will be joining us here in a second. And also, we have our special October um, offer to get the Hidden Man by E.W. Kenyon and the Bible Way to Receive the Holy Spirit by uh, Kenneth Hagin. Those books are so good. They're ridiculously good. And, and we want to sow them into everyone who is giving to rootbible.com. It's really... Our passion is building up and equipping people. And when you partner with us, we build you up and equip you to a whole new level. Because it's not enough for us just to do these classes, although these classes are awesome. It's not enough for us to just do um, these podcasts, which are awesome. But we want to continually sow into your life. And then I want to show you this book as well. Uh, I'm super excited about it because this one is now shipping. That's right. You can order the Root book on our website. So if you go to the Root website, you can scan that QR code right there and go to the Root site and get the book shipped to you. Or if you're just looking for the ebook version, uh, you can go scan that top one or search it on Amazon. So Amazon has the Kindle ebook or you can go to the Root site to get both. And uh, it is ridiculous. We're getting testimonies. I'm working on building testimony slides right now of people that have, have started to dive into it and they're growing and they're understanding and they're, they're increasing in their spiritual wisdom and knowledge by the Spirit as He speaks through that book. I want the same thing for you as well. And so... If you want to check it out, I'd really encourage you to do it. It's, it's good. It's our best-selling book. It's our only book. So it is fun. So that is... Oh, no, no. I have one more thing. The last thing is next Thursday. So a week from today, plus one day, is our Root Bible Vision Night. October 12th. Same exact time as this. So... We're going to tell you about what God has been accomplishing through Root 
It's ridiculous how fast he is increasing root, the numbers of people that we're reaching, the lives that are being transformed, families that are being equipped. It has been such an amazing, even last month and a half, God is just doing some really cool stuff. There we go. Some really cool stuff. And I'm so excited to let you know what he's doing. It's going to be fun. So I'm going to show you what he's been doing and then also where we know God is taking root. The level of increase. And just, it's awesome. It's going to be so cool. You are going to freak out at what God is doing and about to do in root. So that's enough of that. And that's enough of the word so. How many times did I say the word so? Way too many. Let's get into it. We're talking about, wait, you know what? Let me switch over to my Root Bible family, and let me find out if you all have any questions before we really start diving into this. Any questions about the Holy Spirit that you might have about even what we were talking about last week? Oh, hang on. I got you guys turned down. There we go. I see someone started a chat. Let me check that. I have no audio. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad. No audio would be tragic if we did a whole class with no audio. That'd be so sad. All right. No questions. Well, let's dive into it. You know what? I want to start with this, though. I want to start with something that feels impossible. Let's, pre let's pretend that you had a project given to you that you needed to find 40 authors to work together to write a single book and make it cohesive. That would be a huge challenge, but let's make it even more difficult. Let's say that out of those 40 authors, you had to pick some from three different continents. You couldn't have them all on the same continent. They have to be on three different continents. And then that some of them had to read their part in okay um, and you had to write in their own native language so it would be different than english at least if you're watching this without subtitles uh this is english so you'd have 40 authors from three different continents and three different languages probably that'd be my guess now let's make it even more difficult let's say most of those writers wouldn't be able to have a single conversation with each other until the book is published. How cohesive do you think that book would be? How hard would it be to get that book to have no contradictions, um, no you know, raw edits, we gotta, we gotta scrap this whole section, this is wrong, whatever. It would be almost impossible. But that's what the word is. That's what our Bible is. And the secret is that there was one person behind the whole thing inspiring it. So how could it have no errors, no contradictions, and all work together? Because of the Holy Spirit. I, he was the originator of it all. And I want to show it to you because I think this is so fun. So grab your Bibles and we're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. So Chapter 3, verse 16 of 2 Timothy. And I'm going to give you a second. Usually we just pound through these super fast. But here's what I know. Is that your Bible is so powerful in your life. And so if you just read off of the screens and never crack open your Bible, then it does not impact you like it does when you open up your own Bible and read what it says. So we're going to go to 2 Timothy. Timothy 3.16, and the reason I'm saying that is because I am going to put it on the screen. I'm putting it up on the screen for those of you who don't have your Bibles, but I'm encouraging you. If you're watching the recording of this, pause it, grab your Bible, and start up again. If you're joining us live, it's worth it to go grab your Bible, come back, look up 2 Timothy 3.16. So this says... All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, 
for training in righteousness. Four things that the Bible is profitable for, and this version says, inspired by God. Now, there are other translations, actually more accurately translated, is God breathed. And so, although I love my NASB 1977, that's how it says it in there, inspired. But the real word is breathed by God. It was by the breath or the wind of God that all of the scriptures were written. Now, who is the breath or the wind of God? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. And you can see that over and over and over again. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove that to you. We can see it on uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 20. We, or sorry, chapter 1, verse 2. And we're going to go to another verse, and, and so that's where the 20 came from. Anyway, Genesis 1, 2. The Spirit was hovering over the waters. What's that word? The word is ruach, and it means the breath. It's either an expelling of like the air motion, exhaling, that kind of thing, or it can be the infilling, the, the infilling. Either way, it can be, and then it also can be translated as air in motion or wind. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 says Ruach, and yet our Bibles say the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters. Um, another one, John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. Look at this. This one says, So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So we see in the beginning, Genesis, the breath of God is hovering over the waters. And as God the Father speaks and says, Light be, the Holy Spirit is the power behind those words that accomplishes that which it was sent out to do. And then we see Jesus in John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. Jesus breathes on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. That's awesome. Now, i got to throw this in because uh, is this where the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit? Because this is one of the areas some people bring up. Because remember, I, I started with saying the Bible has no contradictions. And yet this verse in John 20, uh, let's put it up again. John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22 says, Receive the Holy Spirit when he breathes on them. And yet in another spot in the word, Jesus tells them to wait in the uh, wait until they receive the Holy Spirit. And then they go to the upper room where Jesus is not. And all of a sudden, the you know how it is, the tongues of fire above their heads and and uh and splits or tongues of flames, flames enter the room, tongues of flames uh, hover over their head, and then they're filled with the Spirit. So which one is right? They both are. I, you know, and I got to show it to you because you're like, wait, wait, how, wait, that doesn't make sense. John chapter 20 is when they received the Holy Spirit, they received salvation. What happens at salvation? The Holy Spirit comes on the inside and he makes you brand new. Like we talked about last week. He turns you into the temple of the Holy Spirit. A place that can, is built for worship and for sacrifice. That's what we talked about last week. And if you missed that one, you've got to go back and watch it. So the Holy Spirit comes in and he makes you into a temple, but he does not live there yet. He builds it for himself. And then the word says that he continues to, um, I don't have that verse written down. He continues to work out your salvation and make you um, ready for his inhabitation. And yet there's still a second infilling or a second time where you need to 
invite him in. And that's called receiving the Holy Spirit. A lot of times the evidence, we're going to talk about this later on, is, is speaking in tongues or having a power to witness or a supernatural boldness or a supernatural ability to do what uh, you could not without his help. There's so many different ways that he uh, reveals himself through you when you receive him. And a lot of what we're going to talk about today. So, because the Holy Spirit was the inspiration for the Bible. He filled every person who was writing these words and told them what to say and how to say it. And so as they're writing this letter to the Ephesians, as Paul's writing his letter to the Ephesians, he had the Holy Spirit come on him and tell him, this is what I want you to write down. That's pretty cool. So, I know I kind of jumped around there. Did I lose you with salvation versus receiving the Holy Spirit? Did I lose anybody in my rootbible.com class? Give me a thumbs up if you're good. Thumbs down if, if you're like, okay, hang on, wait, I'm lost. I'm seeing some thumbs up. Okay, good, we'll keep going then. So what does this mean for us? We're going to get into that. Before I do, I want to share this. That's not the only thing the Holy Spirit inspired. The Holy Spirit inspired what to say many, many, many times in throughout the entire Bible. New Testament, Old Testament, you can see the Holy Spirit inspiring of what people sing. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's do a verse. That's going to help us. Let me do... Let's do 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Let's do that one. So 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. I'm going to do this. That way I can see everything. No. So, so we're going to 2 Peter chapter 1. You know what? I'm just going to put it up on the screen, but I don't want you just to read it off the screen. I want you to look up this verse on your own so you can read it out of your own Bible. We're going to go 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. This is obviously, Peter is writing this down, but as we just read, that all Scripture is inspired by God or God breathed and he is the one that told him to write this down. So, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men, moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. What does this mean? That means that Every single prophet in the Bible from God was saying what the Holy Spirit was telling him to say. That's amazing. That is so cool. It makes me almost jealous to be part of that group. You know, you're like, oh my word. If that is true, I wish I could be part of that group. That everything that is recorded that they said was inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's amazing. How fun would that be? And that's Old Testament. That's New Testament. The Holy Spirit inspired people what to, um, what to write. Holy Spirit inspired people what to say. And we can see all through the Word that the Holy Spirit also showed people or taught people, inspired people for what to do. So not just what to write, not just what to say, but also what to do. And I, you know what? I want to show you a couple scriptures on this and then I'm going to jump straight into some application on this because that's this is where it really gets fun. So let's do um, Exodus 35:31. We're going to go to Exodus 35, 31. By the way, welcome Cindy. Welcome Kellen Grace. What? Welcome Tara and Drew. Welcome Kate. Oh man, my wife might be eavesdropping on me before she gets in here. 
We're going to Exodus 35, 31. Here it is. It says, And he, being God, filled him. And it's talking about, it's like Bezalel is the name of the guy. I'm just going to call him Mr. B because that's just easier. So God filled Mr. B with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all craftsmanship. So we think of the Holy Spirit as the great teacher that will teach us spiritual things that we need to know. And, and so it's, it's easy to read those first three. And, and it, it's really fun when you start to dive into and discover the difference between wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. If it wasn't different, God wouldn't have said it in three different ways. And so there's three different ways that even this verse is pointing out that the Holy Spirit can increase your wisdom, increase your understanding, increase your knowledge to be able to represent God well in this world. But then it go, he goes one step farther and he says, and in all craftsmanship. What does that mean? That means that God gave him the ability to work with his hands and create things. Some use it talking about art, and that's what he was doing. He was building the different aspects of the temple out of wood and out of gold, and he had crazy skills. So much that it was supernatural skills. You're like, wait a second. So like, you can do construction by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit guiding your hands? Yes, you can do art and, and create things for fun like that under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yes, he can give you all of the wisdom and understanding and knowledge that you need to tackle a project that you're kind of tentative to do because you're like, I feel like God is telling me to do this. I don't even know how to do that. I don't even know where to start. Yes, because he doesn't just inspire people of what to write to record a Bible. He doesn't just inspire prophets in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, to say what he's saying. He also, all through the Bible, inspired people not only in their knowledge and understanding, but also in how to create things with their hands. What he, he can give you the craftsmanship to, to build um, and to grow uh, plants? Yes. Anything that God has put on your heart to do, he can give you the ability to do it through the Holy Spirit. Not just a little bit of the ability and then you have to figure out the rest yourself. No, his unlimited power unlimited wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and craftsmanship. The ability to actually get in there and accomplish it. Get in there and do it. He wants to give you that ability. That is awesome. And I'm going to reinforce it because that's just one verse. Let's go to another one. Here's Judges chapter 3, verse 10. And this is called, this is talking about Othniel. At least I think that's how you say it. Othniel, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he judged Israel. When he went out to the war, the Lord, whoop, hang on, I switched that button really quick. The Lord gave uh, King C of Mesopotamia into his hand so that he prevailed over King C. So, what, did, what happened when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him? He excelled in his leadership. He was able to build an army and then go to war against a king. He wasn't even a king. He was just an adult in Israel. That when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he increased in leadership and he had the ability to build teams supernaturally. And he was, had the ability to fight and win against a king with his whole army. 
That's ridiculous. That's awesome. And then it goes on. I didn't write this verse, but if you keep reading, uh, verse uh, 11 then goes and it shows that because of the Spirit of the Lord on Othniel, Othniel led Israel and Israel enjoyed 40 years of peace. So he didn't just, it wasn't, I mean, this is lifelong spirit inspired living. The Spirit of the Lord came on him when he was just an average, everyday adult. And he had the gift of leadership. 40 years of peace sounds nice. That's what Tara just said, or Drew. Uh, they're joined together in holy matrimony. And let's go on before I get really far off. Uh, so, at average adult, Spirit of the Lord comes upon him. And he excels in leadership to the point where he can build a team as in an army that what had God's power on it to go and defeat their oppressor. Right At that time, they were being oppressed by King C and the, what is it? Uh, King C of Mesopotamia. The king over Mesopotamia was ruling over Israel and and. It was not a great place for the Israelites to be. But when he, when he had the Spirit of the Lord come upon him, when Othen, Othniel had that happen, he prevailed against that king. And then his supernatural ability for leadership continued for the rest of his life so that he could not only rule or judge over Israel, but also have the wisdom needed to create peace in on all fronts, both within and without, so that all of Israel was had 40 years of peace. That's awesome. Now, let's talk about what does this mean for our lives? Here's where it gets fun. God himself says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God doesn't play favorites. Oh, you know what? You can read it. If, if you're doubting me, yesterday, today, and forever, that's Hebrews 13.8. I know I'm giving you a ton of scriptures today. Hebrews 13.8, with actual reference instead of just roughly quoting them. And then Romans 2.11, that is God doesn't play favorites. What does that mean for us? The same Holy Spirit that gave every writer of the Word the ability to write down exactly what God wanted said, wanted recorded, lives in you. That same Holy Spirit that inspired every single prophet to say what God was saying lives in you. That same Holy Spirit that gave Mr. B, because I can't pronounce it, Bezalel, the ability for supernatural craftsmanship to build with his hands and accomplish everything that God had designed him to do, that same Spirit lives in you. That same Spirit that was on uh, Othniel for leadership, for team building, for creating peace. That same spirit lives in you. How much are we underestimating who the Holy Spirit can be in and through us? The Word calls us prophets, priests, and kings. As Christians, that is our identity. If we are now his prophets, guess what? We should be able to expect, just like it was in the prophets with the Old Testament and the New Testament, that we can get to the place where every word that comes out of our mouth is inspired by God. <coughs> Some of us can't even fathom that being true about us. We immediately fill in all the times we haven't said what we were supposed to say. But guess what? Our past does not determine 
our future. We are no longer limited by who we were before Christ. We're not even limited by who we were today because God, his, his mercies are new every morning. We can wrap up this day in excellence, inspired by the Spirit, and letting Him guide us into the truth that we need to be able to write what He says, say what He says, do what He says, the rest of the night. And then His mercies are new tomorrow. We, you have that ability in you right now if you've received the Holy Spirit. That is amazing. we got to stop discounting who He can be in and through you at every single moment. You know what? I need him to rely on Him for what to say. Because I don't know about you, there are times all throughout the day I wish I knew the perfect words to say. In a conversation with a friend, in working with my kids, and they're not understanding what I'm saying, and I'm thinking, how can you not understand the words coming out of my mouth? You've known me for your entire life. You know how I communicate. How can you not catch this? And um, yeah, so what do I need to do? Pause. All right, God. You've given me the Holy Spirit. That means you have the right words to say that are going to bring the understanding right now. How do you want me to say this? And he will. He'll give you the words. He's not up there like, oh, yeah, let me see. Let me see if you've done enough good things, if you've done, if you earned it today. No. The Holy Spirit is a free gift. And his gifts and his callings are without repentance, which means he will not take them from you. That's why you see even worldly people have some crazy gifts to sing or to create or for art or for construction or for whatever because it's a God-given gift that he wanted them to use for his glory and even though they're not using those gifts for his glory, he will not remove that from them. Now their their impact is limited which is so crazy to think about because you think about some of these superstar singers or superstar actors or superstar sports athletes. What if they actually gave their life to Christ and used that gift for his kingdom? How much further would they excel? How much further would, they, would that anointing carry them into every sphere of influence? That's crazy to think about. I love thinking about that. But you know what? God's not depending or waiting on the superstars. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on me. Because with Christ and the Holy, being, our lives being hidden in Christ, inspired and powered by the Holy Spirit, He can do supernatural things through you and me just like He did with with Bezalel, just like you did with Othniel. Just people that loved God and when the Spirit of God came on them, they had supernatural ability to do everything that God wanted them. It's true for you. And then how did their impact go? Bezalel built the temple and all of the aspects in that temple that they used for a very long time. All of Israel. Not just a few people. He went from, I like working with my hands, to Holy Spirit anointed. Building things that the entire country would enjoy for years. That's awesome. Othniel. Minding his own business. He's not mentioned before in the scripture as being um, super powerful or super wise or super anything. It's just, he was there. And the Spirit of God came on him. Bam. Look what God did him. Supernatural leadership. Supernatural team building. Supernatural ability to bring peace into every conversation. Both within the country and without. What would that be like for us? Bringing peace both within the family and in the home. And everywhere else we go that we spread supernatural peace because God doesn't play favorites. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's awesome.
supernatural team building. You're like, wait, that's business stuff. No, no, God is over here and business is over here. They're not the same. You're, there's the worldly business and then there's God and church. You don't mix the two. No, in, in the reality, God is in everything we do because it's no longer I that live but Christ that lives within me. That's what Galatians uh, 2.20 says. If we believe that's true, then that means he is there and in us and wanting to live through us everywhere we go. In the business world. That's who God wants to be. And even in what we write. I don't know about you. I, I, for those of you that, that keep a journal and you can go back, and imagine how cool it would be to rely on the Holy Spirit for what to write in there. Holy Spirit, what do you want? Or God, what do you want me to write in here? And the Spirit of God comes on you and you're writing what he wants to write. Supernatural wisdom and revelation is just flowing as you write. Is that impossible? No. Nope. Might feel impossible at times when we're listening to the world systems or our own self-doubt more than him. But it's not impossible. This is who God wants us to be. He does not play favorites. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's looking for those who are willing to be used by him and willing to take those steps to trust him when he does inspire something that's out of the ordinary. Think about it. Othniel going to war. I'm jumping back to this, back to doing again. Uh, Othniel going to war. Do you think he was trying to start wars and start fights all the time? There's no record of him doing that in the scripture until right here. He had a supernatural power to do it. To know what to do. To be different. And he had to trust God when God put that on his heart to step outside of his comfort zone and be something and do something that he'd never done before in confidence that God was going to guide him, that God was going to teach him how to do this. And you can see that through that lifestyle. You could not effectively lead the country for Christ for 40 years, creating peace in every situation without God. That doesn't happen. I can't, without God, I can't create peace in my own house for a day. That's impossible. And yet he had the supernatural ability to do it for a whole country for 40 years. Because he trusted. And he stepped outside of his comfort zone. And when God inspired him to do something, he didn't ask why. He didn't delay. He didn't try to figure out how he was going to make this happen. And, oh man, if I'm going to do this, I don't even know how to do this. I gotta, I gotta, you know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to join as many online uh, groups that talk about this so that I can learn from, from the experts and you know, hopefully get a little bit better at What is that? That's man's wisdom. Don't do that. If God says, hey, join this group, then do it. But if he's not inspiring that, don't do it. You know, there's a, there's a story about um, uh, a runner, or a race in Australia. That it was a, uh, I want to say it was like a 50 kilometer race, 50 mile race, something like that. It was huge. And uh, it had never been done under, I want to say, oh, I'm going to slaughter this. I wish I, I should have wrote it down. It just came to me, so I didn't have time to write it down. In a certain amount of time. Never been done faster than that. Uh, because the world's wisdom at that time was if you were going to run long distances for a long hours, you had to get 8 to 10 hours of sleep so that you could run for 12 hours. And so... 
they had this huge, long, multiple day race. And uh, this one um, kind of hobunky backwoods guy shows up, doesn't have the elite running shoes. He's got boots. He doesn't have the elite running wear. He's just wearing regular everyday clothes. And people were kind of laughing at him before the race. He's like, I got friends that tell me I'm fast. And so I'm here and we're going to see. And uh, so to make a long story short, especially because I can't remember all of the details, he came in first by multiple hours and everyone was blown away. They're like, how did you do that? And he said, well, I ran the race. I just didn't give up. They're like, what, what do you mean? You beat our fastest runners. How is that even possible? And he goes, I just kept running. And they came to find out when everyone else was stopping for, for their 10 hours of rest so that they can run for 12 hours, that he just kept going. He didn't stop. He stopped to rest now and then and then just kept going. And because he didn't know the worldly thinking at that time, he wasn't hindered by the worldly thinking at that time and was able to blow away what all of the best, most trained, highly elite athletes were able to do because he wasn't trained in the worldly way of thinking. And that's exactly how it can be for you and me. We don't have to rely on the world to hopefully excel to the same level or close to that the world is at. That's ridiculous. That's not how God works. God works exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think. That's Ephesians 3.20. How? According to the power at work through you. According to His power at work through you. We have to stop relying on the world and the world's way of doing things, the world's way of saying things, the world's way of accomplishing things, even the world's way of writing things down. And find out from God, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to write? There are books that God wants to release through some people that are watching here and you've been hindered because you don't know the worldly way of doing it. Why wait? Just start and the Holy Spirit will guide you. There's some of you that ha are watching this and you know that God has inspired things on your heart and you're just waiting because you're thinking, I don't know hardly anything about this. I haven't gone to school for this. I haven't researched this. I haven't seen what all these worldly people have to say about that, their abilities, their training, their whatever. Maybe I need to sign up for an online college class that deals with this. If God says do that, then do it. If he does not inspire that, don't do it. What do you need to do? God, what's the next step? Then as he puts it on your heart, next step, do it as fast as you can. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Put action to, put obedience to his command quickly. Don't delay. Don't wait for your ability to, oh, I just don't know how to do this. I'm just going to figure this out. God's put an urgency on me. And so I just got to, you know, it's going to be long, crazy hard hours of me researching all these things and making sure I do this right. And blah, 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 blah. No. The Holy Spirit can show you. He can inspire it. There's things even as you are writing to-do lists. Wait, now we're going too far. Now that, that, that Holy Spirit can't rest on my to-do list. Why not? If he can rest on every writer of the word to tell them exactly what to write, do you think you could have the Holy Spirit rest on you to show you, hey, this is your to-do list. This is the to-do list that I want you to accomplish. Be ridiculous to think that he couldn't. And then what do we do? 
we fight the temptation to add all kinds of things onto that to-do list that we have high value for that's not in God's best plan for ourselves. And then we get bogged down, we get burdened. Oh man, I just I just don't know what to do. God's I got all these things I have to get done, and then you know God adds all these other things on top of me. It's just going to be long, tiresome, weary hours to hopefully get some small gains into the things that God's been speaking to me about. That's how too many people think. Makes me sick. We gotta stop that. I used to think that way. It's ridiculous. It's trying to plan a life absence of absent of God's power to accomplish God's plan. How ridiculous is that? We got to stop that. We got to start relying on God to be who he says he'll be and let him be the inspiration of what to say, of what to do, of what to write every single day so that we can stay in his perfect plan. Anything else is idolatry. Anything else is trading the gold for brass and then saying, hey, this is just like gold. You know, what? It's, it's trading his good, pleasing, and perfect plan for, well, I got some good stuff done. It's trading well done, good and faithful servant for, well, at least you made it to heaven or worse. We can get to the place where we are so enslaved by our own desires in the name of Christ that we are worshiping unto ourselves with all of these self-worshiping actions in the name of God so that everyone can see how amazing I am and how much I can accomplish and I got to be the best at this or that because, you know, that's what I'm supposed to be. And we, we worship ourselves right out of Christianity and where our full trust, reliance, worship, focus is not on him, but on how we can be all things to all men and how we can be this and that and accomplish this and that. It's ridiculous. We got to knock this stuff off. We have to give up, relent, and say, God, just like Jesus, your will be done. Whatever that is, that's what I'm doing. I mean, think about Jesus as our example. He lived as our example. That's what the Word says. Not, not to show off how big and powerful God is, but to be our example. And Jesus says, I did nothing that I didn't see my father doing. How did he see his father doing it? Through the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit searches the deep things of God. Or searches the things of God. Yea, even the deep things of God. And then he reveals them to us. That's who he is. That's what he does. It's not just that, oh yeah, God's my... The Holy Spirit's my teacher. He'll he'll teach me all things. No, we got to get into where that is our real, everyday reality. That He is our teacher. Not just, here's something good you should probably know, uh, but where He is leading and guiding us with supernatural wisdom to accomplish His supernatural plan in supernatural ways. To have more wisdom than we should. Why? Because he's with us. To have more understanding than we should. Why? Because he's with us. To have the perfect answer, no matter if you're dealing with kids or business partners or um, friends or whatever it is, in every sphere of influence, that you can have the perfect words to say. Why? Because we are his priests now. We gotta stop cutting him so short. We gotta stop glorifying ourselves and seeing our limitations as being a major hindrance to him, instead, realizing that our limitations have already been dealt with on the cross. We died with him, we were crucified with him, we died with him, we were buried with him, we were raised with him, and now we're seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ. 
That is our reality. Those limitations, that lack of understanding, that lack of wisdom, the not knowing what to do, that's all old way thinking. That's not relying on the Spirit. So if, you're, if you have that thought, if you're fighting those temptations, man, I just don't know what to do. I want to serve God. I just want to do what He wants, but I just don't know what to do. Get with Him. Connect with Him some more. Because He will reveal it. Jesus Himself said, My sheep hear my voice. Now, who is His voice in this world? The Holy Spirit. And I can, well, you know, I got a couple verses I could show you. Let me, let's do um, John 16 13. This is Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. How much of the truth? All the truth. Is that just to fill our heads with random information? I know when the first episode of uh, Superman was produced on TV and when the first comic book was written. No. Unless he wants you to learn that, but for most of us, no. That, that's irrelevant. It has nothing to do with anything. So what's the all truth that he's guiding us into? All the truth that you need to accomplish his will. And he goes on. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. The Holy Spirit will show you, hey, here's what's coming up. You need to start preparing in this area. You need to start learning this. You need to start focusing on this. You need to start writing these kind of things down. Leave yourself a note to do this. Hey, sell, if you have an Android phone like me, uh, send yourself a text for this at this time. Uh, okay, I'm doing it. Why? Because he's going to disclose to you what is to come. That's who he is. He wants to prepare you so that just like Bezalel with craftsmanship, he can say, hey, you know what? My plan in the future is to create things that people will use to worship God for hundreds of years. So start working in this area. Do a little bit of this. Hey, tackle this project. Can he do that? You bet he can. We see it all the time in the Word. You know what? In my own life, I was in 7th or 7th or 8th grade, the summer camp, and uh, our speaker that year really liked him. He was really challenging how I was thinking. And uh, he said, how many of you know that God knows the future? And we're like, yeah! How many of you know that God knows your future? Yeah! How many know that God knows what you're going to do in 20 years? Yeah! In 10 years? Yeah! What is, how many of you have asked him what it is so you can start preparing now? Crickets. We're like, what, wait, what, what, wait. Uh, you mean there's things we could do right now to prepare for things in the future? Even as a kid? Yes. Even as an adult, you wait, you're saying that right now you could be preparing me for the supernatural things you want me to accomplish when I'm 40 or 50 or 60 or 70? Yes. Just because you hit adulthood and things get into a regular rhythm doesn't mean that his plans for you have stopped. That this is as far as you'll ever go and this is all you can ever experience and this is all you'll ever be. How ridiculous is that? You know what that is? World thinking again. Worldly, carnal thinking. You start seeing all of your limitations as an adult, and so you back off on God's plan, back off on who he wants you to be, and miss out on that perfect plan. You settle for something so much less than inspired, than the adventure that God wants to take you on we got to stop doing that. He will disclose to you what is to come. That's why it's so important that we write what he wants written. We, you know, we've done it before. 
when we finally give up and we're like, okay, God, what do you want us to write down for the house you want us to believe for? We wrote down that list. Two days later, that house became available. After searching and searching and searching, and we could make this work and we could make that work and we could probably... It was horrible. It was endless. When we finally stopped and said, God, what do you want me to write down? What kind of house do you want us to have? It changed. Isaiah 55 says that his words did not return void, God's words, but they accomplished that what they were sent out to do. So how are we prophesying? How are we saying what God is saying about our future? God, what do you want me to say about my future? You want me to say, what? That feels kind of uncomfortable. I don't really see myself that way. I don't see how that could happen. I don't, I don't. What is that? You're relying on your own wisdom, your own limited human insight, and using that to judge if God's telling you the truth. What are you saying? You trust in you more than him. You worship you and... uh, um. Obey God when it makes sense to you. Who's really Lord in that relationship? Who's really Lord and Master? we got to stop doing that. We have to back up and be like, you know what? You want me to say this about me? Guess what I'm saying? I'm going to say it, what you're saying, how you say it, and I'm not going to stop. Think about it. Think about Abraham. I'll give you, there's an, an example of that. Abraham means father of many nations, and yet God named him father of many nations before he even had the promised child. 25 years or more before he had that promised child. He began, God asked him to begin speaking about himself, I am the father of many nations. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why would it be any different for us? I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm like bragging and what, what God could accomplish in me. I mean, that just feels kind of weird. I don't know. I'll, I'll say it when I see it. I'll say it when I see it. When my friends start acknowledging that I am this, then I'll be that. But until they really start calling that spiritual gift out of me, then, then I, 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 just, I just can't be that. I don't, I don't see myself that way either. That's so opposite of the life that God wants us to have. No, we have to begin releasing His words. We have to be about ourselves, about our kids, about our country, about our churches, about our friends, about our bosses, about our spouses. We can't give in to the world's way of thinking, the world's way of talking, the world's way of anything. Instead, we must be inspired by the Spirit, saying what He's saying, doing what He's doing, writing what He wants us to write. There's nothing else more valuable right now. Anything else would be idolatry. It's weird to say, it's hard to say, that's the truth. If we are refusing to do, to say, to write what he's telling us to, then we're saying we know more than him. It's a hard message, but I'm telling you, friends, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. To inspire us to be who he wants us to be. To do what he wants us to do. To say what he wants us to say. To write what he wants us to write. To no longer be limited by our own human ability, by our own human understanding, by our own demographics, our upbringing, our amount of college we've gone to, our whatever it is, our amount of health that we're currently walking in, whatever. It's all irrelevant. We need to be doing, saying, writing, believing what God says. And that comes to us through the Holy Spirit. He's the one that will teach us all things. He's the one that will hear what God is saying and disclose to you what is to come. So what do we need to do? 
for a lot of us, probably start with apologizing. God, I'm sorry. I've limited who you can be in and through me because of my own awareness of my fleshly or carnal abilities or lack thereof. Then turn from it. Thank him. God, I thank you that the truth is I am no longer limited by these things because greater is he that is in me than he that lives in the world that is not by might nor by power but by the Spirit, says the Lord, that you will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ever ask or think, dream up or imagine according to your power at work within me. So I'm going to believe you can be bigger and more powerful in me than I've ever let you be before. And today things change. I will not go back to being the same way. I will live an inspired life by the Holy Spirit to be who he wants us to be in every conversation, in every situation, in the house, in the church, in every area. That's who God wants to be in and through you right now. You know, Kelly says, I'm always asking questions, but sometimes need to ask different questions. That's true. And I think it was either last week or the week before we talked about asking the Holy Spirit, what's the question that you want me to ask? No, you know what it was? It was two weeks ago, prayer. That's when I talked about that. What's the question that you want me to ask? And he'll tell you. He'll teach you all things. And sometimes our, our questions are so wrapped up in our own understanding and our own emotion that it makes it very tough to hear what he wants to say. But if we ask his questions, then his questions are wrapped up in his supernatural power, his supernatural ability, his supernatural wisdom, and then we can put action to them a whole lot easier. That's a good... Uh, thanks for sharing that, Kelly. It's time, friends. The world is waiting on you. God is waiting on you. The unsaved are waiting on you. Your family is waiting on you. Your church is waiting on you. What are you waiting for? Let's connect with him. Hear what he's saying. And obey right away. No matter what it is. What you say, what you create, what you write, whatever. That's where we're going to see Christ be glorified. Because we'll be accomplishing his supernatural plan by his supernatural power. That's the Holy Spirit, our teacher, our guide, our inspiration. All right, I want to make sure I'm leaving you all feeling built up, not torn down. So what questions do you have? What comments? What really stood out to you and, or questions, you know, things you're like, I don't know about this or that. I'm going to ask my rootbible.com friends out there. Um, those of you that are watching on social media, put it in the chat window and um, usually our system will let us know what is being said. But what about my, my root friend? Cindy, how about you? Are you feeling built up and inspired by God? To be inspired by God in everyday life? Or are you have, do you have a lot of questions at this point of whatever? Sorry, I had to unmute. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm feeling inspired um, to ask those questions and find those answers for sure. All right, I just got my speakers on so I could hear you. I'm going to ask you a question, and then I didn't even have my speakers on to hear your answer. So I apologize. Can you say it again? All right. Cindy, if you have a question, unmute yourself and ask. 
Um, I'm going to uh, Tara and Drew Sr. That makes you sound like an old man. Questions, comments, concerns, things that stood out, either good or bad, that you want more info on? I don't have any questions or concerns. I feel pretty built up. Mm -hmm. I feel... uh. I feel good. I feel I'm definitely asking the Holy Spirit those questions when, you know, concerning my day and things that we're doing and just trying to, like you said, not get bogged down with the world's way or, or any manifestations like of the body, you know, mm -hmm. uh, recently d dealt with, you know, something attempting to come against me and, um, and just having to, you know, continuously go after it and be led by the spirit and not be led by my flesh or my mind. And so it, it was definitely like it was a battle, but but, yeah. you know, Jesus has the victory. So so it's good. And so but it is something I have to do, you know, constantly just doing it with the Holy Spirit and just remembering that, you know, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and I have access to all those things that Jesus already took care of. So nice. I, I feel pretty built up about it. But um, when you pray, if you could pray that I will continue to, you know, have that strength and just be led by the Spirit and all those things, mm -hmm. that would be great. Good. Kelly, you got anything? Um, yeah, I'm feeling built up too. Um, as always, the, um, I ask a lot of questions, I think all the time anyway, but I've been trying to ask more questions like, um, how can I glorify God today? What can I do for you today? What do you want to teach me today? Um, I just added what questions should I ask, <laughs> Good. but, um, there's so many things that we can ask for. Um, I mean, I think that's why it tells us is not, it shouldn't even be up to us to direct our steps because we are not capable. <laughs> so, um, there's an endless supply of questions to ask, but knowing that we have this helper that never leaves us, that always comforts us, that's always with us is awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. It expands who I understand he wants to be in and through me. It's so much less just me trying to figure out how to be a good Christian. And it's him actually showing me this is what I want for today. And that's going to be different than what it is for others. And I love that. Endless comfort. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? Let me pray over you all. And I just saw what time it is. I'm over. So I got to let you guys go. God, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for choosing us to be part of your family. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be our teacher and our guide and our inspiration into all things. Teach us to hear his voice well. Teach us to follow your direction well, to understand what you're saying, what you want said, what you want done, what you want us to write down for your glory, for your honor. Teach us how to obey you well, to trust you well. Show us the things that we can uh, conquer with you so that we are equipped and ready for the things that you have in store for us in the future. And Lord, help us to believe that you're so much bigger and ready and available for every moment in our everyday life. To not go through life anymore with our being, just being led by our own hu limited human insight being led by the wisdom of man or the wisdom of this world, but instead abandon all of that. Take on your wisdom, your understanding, your knowledge, and your ability to accomplish your supernatural plans. God, you're just so good. And I thank you that you want us to step into this even more 
than we do. And so that you have already provided everything we need for that life, for that level of godliness, for that level of whatever you have. Teach us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Thank you for joining me. We're going to dive into more of the Holy Spirit next week. And then remember, uh, the day after next week's class is our Vision Week, our Vision Thursday. Vision, what is it called? I don't even know. Hang on, let me pull it up. Vision Night. There it is. So next Thursday is our Root Bible Vision Night. I cannot wait to share with you what God is doing. And the truth is, the numbers just keep getting better. It's, it's ridiculous. So I'm like, I'm texting Kate almost every day. Check this out. I was excited about this number. Now look what it is. Look at this percentage of growth. This is ridiculous. Look at these people. It's, and look at this testimony that just came in. This is awesome. So it's, I'll share those with you. In one week, in one day, in eight days. I'm so tempted to share them now because I'm so excited about it. But it's going to be even better then. So. Uh, I will have a sign up on the website so you can join just like you do for Root. And I'll have probably a pop up by the end of the night to remind you when you come to Root Bible next time to jump into that vision night class, recording, whatever. Conference night, whatever. Our vision night. It's going to be good. So, all right. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you all later. <laughs>